There was anger, racism and chaos. What happened on the 3rd of August in Hull horrified people in this city as much as anywhere else. Rioters hunting down people who didn't look like them. As we saw in other towns and cities, the mob surrounded a hotel in central Hull that's housing asylum seekers. The Prime Minister described it as far-right thuggery, but we've spoken to many people here who say there was far more at play. The men who filmed this agreed to meet us. They wanted to explain why they were there on the fringes of a riot. Hi, lads. Hiya. How are you? I'm Tom. Yeah. He keeps her up. Very, very useful. I've got a room through there, but yeah. I sleep in here. That's what I sleep on. Right, okay. He got bit by a rat. That was the thing. Did he? Oh, right. aye. It's touched my nose. It was nose. Three o'clock in the morning. morning. Yeah, yeah. What, while you were asleep? Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I felt this pain and I woke up. And so rat touched my nose. There's the rat poisons. They were full two days ago. They say they've tried to move out, but are stuck in this nightmare. So there's just rats everywhere? Just rats everywhere. I mean, look at it. It's a playground for rats here, around here. We were there. Watching it all. What did Crazy. you make of it when you were watching it? <laughs> Deserved. Get rid of them. I just think it's wrong. Because I know a lot of people are on the streets and stuff, you know, and it's, it's not right. They're not getting the help they deserve, but they just come here illegally and get everything they want. It's not right. But when it's taking away all our necessary needs, hospitals, dentists, hotels, this, housing, everything, it's just... Oscar and James say they were there documenting what was happening in their city, but did not get involved. But you can look in the like, um, you know, I, I've got a problem with immigrants. I don't have a problem with immigrants. I have, quite, I have quite a few problem with the system. But yeah. quite a few people on that, in that moment, really did. And it was direct and people of colour were being attacked <coughs> and chased. Yes. And that's overt racism. Yeah, and I get it, yeah, 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 yeah I get it, yeah. but the thing is, is um, yeah, people get carried away in a moment, you know. Do you think racism was a motivator for at least some I of the people there? That the minority it was, and I think for the majority it was just frustration. I believe they just wanted to, you know, to kick back at the people that are in there to... You know, I don't think everybody thinks like me and goes, God bless them, they've got a problem too. Because they have got problems. Yeah. Yeah, they'll be for hell. They'll be for war zones and this, that, and the other, you know. And I think people at the time just felt a lot of anger, a lot of frustration that, like, uh, you know, there's people living on the streets that are British born and are not getting looked after. I look at the pain in people's eyes sometimes and you, you just think to yourself, you just, you think, don't you? What the hell? What's going on? You two watch this a lot. This yeah, 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 constantly. I mean, he's got like 650,000 yeah, followers. I wake, followers. Up, I wake up to it because, I mean, because of the rap problem, like I said, yeah. we don't sleep. They watch YouTube channels that are built around the immigration debate. Here we go. Church is bent down across Europe. To them, yeah, yeah. mainstream news has become irrelevant. You know, Katie Price turning up at court. Yeah, Katie Price turning up at court. It's like, amazing. Yeah, like, is this, and that was on the BBC. This is news. Like, I give a fool flying. Yes. So this is your corner of Hull. This is one of them. Oscar wants us to meet Donna, who sits most days outside a nearby shop. She used to have her own cleaning business before her life fell apart. We're not looked after. I don't feel safe. Yeah. And I don't feel safe. Yeah. And this is in my own country. Terrible. It is awful. The problem of finding somewhere decent to live is a recurring theme. Where will you sleep tonight? Under the bridge. I'll show you where I stay from. This is my bedroom. Shit, it's everywhere. Our country should be looking after us. Not other other people's problems. It's not. They want to sort their own problems out first, and this is one of them. Along the Anlaby Road, we met Danny and Lisa. Good afternoon, Adept. They're busy, juggling vulnerable people, and not enough decent housing. A lot of people thought it was far right agitators whipping things up. 
Oh no, I why? Not everybody was in that riots for the same reason. There'll, there'll have been people in that riots because they they are almost they haven't had help, but that doesn't make them racist. They just wanted to get their point across. Danny has been homeless himself. As a younger man, he served time for violent offences. So I've got drug problems, mental health problems, even just living on the street. It's a war every day for him. So I get what they're saying that the fleeing wars, but I was a fight in a daily war. So you think it's that 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 desperate? That yeah, feels like a war. Yeah, yeah. We have about twenty-five tenants, and we just have to share them out. Who's more in need? Really, you do get these coming across, and they're getting hotels, and they're getting fed three times a day. I was probably can't eat sometimes once a day. And it needs solving. It does need solving. Yeah, definitely. But will it? That's the problem, isn't it? The food bag was heading to Carl, who was trying to get back on his feet. The police came along, those homeless on the streets, no help or anything. It's been a hard battle. Carl is focusing on his own recovery, but can see why others felt compelled to take to the streets. You shout with so loud, can't you? And they don't listen. Do you know? Just one of those things, isn't it? It boils over sometimes. Because some of these communities don't feel like happy places at the minute. No, they're not. there's a lot of tension in the air, there's a lot of aggression, there's a lot of animosity, it's not always just down to one person in particular or down to the government per se, it's, it just causes stress throughout. You know, I, I have my own battles every day, do you know what I mean? It's... That tension and animosity that Carl talked about is at the heart of this. It's a byproduct of successive UK governments failing to control immigration. Yes, racism was a thread that ran through these riots, but it's also true that there are deprived communities across Britain where people feel ignored and forgotten. And they keep coming through Danny and Lisa's door. Chaos in it, to be fair. But it is down to the government to sort it. There's only them all can. And the, way they, the only way, in my eyes, they'll do it is that they give them equal opportunities. If they are going to allow them, then so be it. But please look after ours as well. Otherwise, it'll just continue, and it will. Do you think it could kick off again? Oh, without a doubt, yeah. yeah. But I, I don't blame it for kicking off. I don't blame it at all. Many of those who rioted in Hull are now starting long prison sentences. But the wounds remain open, and the roots of these riots run deep. Tom Parmenter, Sky News, Hull.